it's time for the questions. I don't know if there are some questions here that someone that would like to address some 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 thoughts, some ideas, some commentaries, some uh, some questions. There are there are a couple of person people. Okay, there's a question over there. Is there any research about uh, the communication or? Um, trying to find patterns uh, not only in plants but also in animals in uh, communicating and trying to uh, extract uh, some behaviors uh, or some patterns in in their speech like whales or dolphins have you ever heard about it i i know that they are using this intensely, uh, so they're applying AI to do exactly this, right? To try to discern uh, patterns. Um, there are, it's, it's quite difficult because ultimately um, this is at the, uh, sort of at the edge of uh, also computer science. So without knowing something is um, a sign, you know, how, how how can you have um, an algorithm identify that? And then how do you go about confirming what the algorithm gave you wasn't just some, some noise. But yes, this is definitely used. Um, it's just very difficult. I don't know the other specific examples, though. I know that they tried to do this unsuccessfully with plant uh, neural signaling, I mean, not neural <laughs> action potential, so electrochemical signals. Uh, they were very optimistic about it, but so far, no success. And they're also using it in um, uh, human brain studies, uh, like uh, EM. Um. I have a question uh, regarding this first um, uh, photo that you showed about uh, the test where you were standing for 20 hours uh, in front of this uh, carpet, uh, green carpet or, or carpet of lawn or whatever it was. Um, more, I would like to know more precise information. How was the lighting? And uh, I mean, I've grown up in amongst flowers and flowers are very known to react to light and has the same test uh, done also when you place uh, like a completely uh, statue uh, completely unliving thing in front of in the same uh, scene the same light uh, like with a light position uh, are you sure it is uh, reacting to you or just to light um no i'm I mean, of course, it was reacting to the light. Uh, what, what I was doing was blocking it, right? So plants sense light and different qualities of light. If they, if a seed sprouts in the shadow of another tree, it will want, and that is the most common situation why it would sprout in the shade, right? It's another tree, and this is why it has. It takes this as a signal, and this so-called etiolation happens. So it will grow long and skinny, and just so it'll go like, okay, let's head towards the light. And so this was uh, a process that has been described in science, and I was just trying to think of using something that is within the perceptual milieu of the plant, because we knew we know that this has a physiological function. And uh, to sort of yeah surrender to the plant in a way that they would are normally also react, but this isn't. I'm not a plant, right? So the situation was in fact like you are saying quite different. It was quite artificial, and in the end, it was not so much about you know the shadow being an index uh, pointing uh, to me, uh, in semiotically speaking, but rather my commitment to the plant became an index for the audience to focus on Cress, which they normally wouldn't, right? So there was something interesting that happened there that was also uh, kind of unexpected. Yeah. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> I thought it was uh, very interesting to see different perspectives uh, from different uh, speakers, but what I noticed that uh, uh, many of you use the same kind of dilemma of like, uh, we versus they. So 
we and, and algorithms as they. So uh, my question to you, would you imagine in the future as embracing AI as a, as a let's say, a partner uh, and a kind of uh, individual on the same level, so to work together, uh, rather than seeing it as, as something completely different? Uh, yes, <laughs> uh, I think uh, I, I'm at least I think, or in a way, or I will only speak for myself. But I think all the projects actually has this uh, feeling of some kind of togetherness with the with the with the programming and the AI. I can tell from my point of view that uh, d d programming and data training these twelve different personalities that we made was like having a, a baby at home, actually. Because we were, I was constantly training it, talking with it, getting uh, crazy answers, uh, data training it, data training it, data training it. And it became actually a part of the family uh, for a long period. And, um, and it, but it's very expensive to train it. So I have to, uh, have to wave goodbye to it, but uh, <laughs> Actually, I asked my co-programmers if it was possible to get it back just for a few hours. So I am a little um, reluctant on this one. Uh, so, so I think yes, and also the the way we try to to uh, to develop the the performance into this uh, new third, the three-dimensional, is actually a way of saying that if um, of course, this is also a dystopian idea, but but if uh, the AI should be humanized and it should be done in a, what do you say? And I think it would be done in a new way. It would not be like, it, it would be creating their own, their own way of, of humanizing themselves if they, go that way. But of course, that's a big, big, big question. Yeah. I actually think no. I wouldn't really ever consider the kind of like the AI as being like a partner in the way that I would consider someone who, someone else who I work with a collaborator. Because I think as much as it kind of like, it does kind of change how you think and it gives you ideas that you might not have ever got to by yourself. I think for me, always the kind of concept of the work or the kind of ideas that I'm trying to kind of create are mine and mine alone. And I think kind of like, I think, um, I think about kind of drawing and painting, I think as, as good examples of how kind of like you have drawing and painting as both nouns and verbs. You have them as actions and kind of objects. And I think the kind of action of, of painting or drawing or making art is something that is a very human process because you're trying to kind of like bring about ideas, you're trying to kind of like collapse concepts, you're trying to kind of like really interrogate the world around you. And, but you know, like the, and whereas kind of like the art, the, the painting, the drawing is, is an object. And I think whereas kind of like AI can create art or paintings or drawing as objects, things that you put on the wall that look pretty or, or, or something like that. They can't do that process part. They can't do that ideas part. That is a very human way. That's a human thing. And so for me, until they can get to that stage, which I think is a long, long way off, they can never really truly kind of become a partner, become a collaborator. And that a lot of these questions around, around kind of like this, I think actually go back to like a lot of like 1960s conceptual art stuff, um, yeah. Just, just to add, you're, you're right. So what uh, AI is producing so far is just um, a soup of what we are giving. So it's just like, okay, we pitch from here, pitch from here. But if you can see there an artist, an artist doesn't take an idea from, from the sky neither. He takes it from somewhere else, from an image, from the feeling, from an emotion he had or she had already. So it's very similar, but, but unless uh, that a machine is not yet creative in our opinion, but, but yes, this creativity is just a mixture of soup on, on this. But I think the difference is that 
artists have intention. They're trying to do something. There's kind of like this end goal that they're trying to achieve. And I think with machines, there's not that intention yet. There's not that kind of desire to kind of explain or question or, or do. Um, that intention is fed in by humans at the moment. It's, it's fed in by kind of like the artists who are working with them. And I think that's why I, I feel kind of like hesitant to say that uh, a, a machine can never truly be an artist in the way that we kind of like understand them now. And I agree with you in, in this way of defining. Uh, within the definition that you propose, I agree with you, however, I think uh, that what is also uh, important is to consider that something does not necessarily have to have agency and intentionality in the way that we do in order to be uh, in a, a sort of a recursive loop with us. So, you know, it's, it's sort of with plants, I face a similar problem, right? Um, and it's not a problem, it's a question. So what do their needs, desires, and the fact that um, I use them or I co-work with them in projects. How does that shape the projects? What is their agency within this? And uh, so I think having uh, this ubiquitous presence of algorithms that are open-ended, uh, that feed off of the real-time data that we're creating and are being influenced by them, right? It's sort of perhaps not as important uh, how to define their agency according to us, but to recognize that they have it and then observe how this agency manifests itself, right? And, you know, what are the... And I, but I think outcomes? there's also, like, another question that is coming out as kind of, like, more and more artists are choosing to work with machine learning and AI is that you're having kind of, like, different, very different kind of, like, modes of making and very different kind of, like, kind of... Uh, fields kind of like all kind of in a way kind of being collapsed into just the medium that is being used like artificial intelligence because I think like a lot of my work is probably like closer to documentary than anything else so kind of questions around kind of like truth and ethics and stuff are way more relevant than some of these other questions but and I think as it matures like um, that will become more apparent Okay, I don't know if there's another question. We still have room for one uh, question. Might be possible. Okay, there's. Okay, there's another one. Then this. I'm I'm really liking the botanical theme of the morning's presentation and. I'm wondering what you think about the possibility of having plants and deep learners or neural nets kind of collaborating on stage in the sense of like, could they be like a little bonsai or maybe a little terrarium and actually get the plant, get, get the AI to monitor the plant and get the plant to kind of drive the AI and see if they could do something like a bonsai plant or some kind of, uh, you know, landscape art. Yes, I think it, it has been actually attempted also by, by uh, many different artists, uh, right? I think Philip Ross, uh, Andy Gracie, off the top of my head, probably some people in the 70s as well already. Um, yes, would that be art, though, if it was created by the AI and the plant? Oh, that's a provocation. <laughs> yeah, there's another question here. First, okay, let, let us... You need to, the mic in order to, yeah, but they're going to put it in Zoom online. And if it were sold at Christie's, who would get the money? Exactly. And now it gets hairy. <laughs> So uh, if there's not 
any more questions, so we should uh, leave it here. Thanks a lot for uh, for this wonderful session. And right now, I think there's a, there's a connection with the people that are doing the hackathon over there. I think we should get in connection with our colleague, uh, Ana Carreras, isn't it? I don't know if she's ready, and she's going to explain us a little bit of what's going on there. OK, I hear some noise. Hello. OK, that's Anna. Hello, Hi. Anna. We, we don't see you? OK, I Hello, see you Paolo. over there. OK, I see you. Perfect. Hi, can you hear us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can hear you. Oh, yeah, wait a minute. And we can Roman. see you also. You're ah, going to okay. explain us a little bit what's going on there, what's happening? Yes. So please yeah, go ahead, have, um, tell us. We are working. I don't know if you can see the artist uh, behind me in the lab. We have been working for two days. Today is our second day. We just uh, met together here in this nice lab, uh, six artists and scientists. So um, just to play around with uh, any artistic ideas uh, related to AI um, concepts or questions. So yeah, we have uh, Bogdana, Laura and Alex uh, working in this table. You can see Breeze is over there, really, really concentrated. And we have um, Guillem and Christian over there. Yesterday, we just uh, had uh, these nice discussions about, about some, um, yeah, about AI and some of the ideas that Anna also mentioned about creativity and consciousness. AI being conscious of what they, of what they, they, they are creating or doing. We also have discussions about uh, yeah, plants, not cucumber, sorry. We were talking about more in an holistic way about ecosystems and, and how are they related and how complex they relate to each other. And yeah, we, today we are hands-on um, developing some ideas so um, there's something there uh, working on the materiality of AI and the characteristics and the anthropomorphic characteristics that we attribute to uh, that black box. So some, we will be working in something about um, mythology and let's see what, what we end up. I don't want to spoil the project. We have some sonification of the data gathery, gathered from the audience. So also to reveal or to um, uh, make sound with some of this data that AI can extract. And we have uh, trees involved in some playful game uh, to detect and lab label what's art and what's not by AI. So yeah, I think it will be, yeah, this, we have this playful approach for, for you. So we hope this bring uh, new questions and, and conversations into the conference. OK, thanks. Uh, you, you told us that, uh, yesterday, you told us that you had a, a big uh, discussion about artistic intentionality and creativity. <laughs> yes, yesterday we, have, we had that. That conversation was super cool. Yeah, we had that conversation going on uh, about uh, if AI can be creative itself or just as a partner or as a tool for artists. And we end up uh, yeah, discussing about consciousness and intention and what's behind the artistic process or what can a machine have or not, and yeah, maybe this mythify the artistic process. Yeah, so yeah, yesterday we we end up filling two blackboards about ideas, too many ideas, and today it's more uh, hands-on to have something a prototype but, uh, for tomorrow and something that we can show you and play with you together. OK, thanks. So um, uh, I guess that, that uh, tomorrow we will see a little bit of what you, the results. But, but of course, this is just an ongoing uh, open uh, approach towards uh, some ideas. 
Yeah, sure. Tomorrow, artists will present better than me their ideas and their projects. So, uh, and some of the ideas that are behind. And I think, yeah, with this artistic, more open and less constrained approach, uh, some of these interesting conversations also who is the artist, who is the creator, and where, where lies creativity, or some of these ideas that you were also discussing this, during the questions and answers uh, can, can be retaken and discussed again. So, yeah. So you, you, you tell us there are three groups of three, or? Yes, three, okay. three different projects, yeah. So three groups of, uh, of artists working together, oh. yes. And they just came up like naturally through the through the process. I mean, it's just something that happened. <laughs> yes, sure. We met we met uh, online before coming to Bazaar, but uh, in person, which is also nice to be able to meet in person. Uh, we met yesterday for the first time, and after discussing, uh, yeah, the crowd groups just uh, were naturally formed. Uh, because of the interest of several of the artists uh, just joined together. So, okay, th thanks a lot. So uh, we are really uh, willing to, to see <laughs> what it comes from that. Anyway, I, we know that it's a process and it's something that's just an uh, ongoing uh, thing. Yeah, I'm very fast. Two days two to days. have something okay. built. Yes. Okay, so well, and, and if, I'm I'm sure that some some good things come out come out from that. At least from for the interaction sure. for all of the of the people involved in that. No? Yes, the, at least the the conversations and discussions we had so far, they, they have been already very very interesting, and and yeah. So of course, sure. Okay. Okay, so thanks a lot. I don't know if someone has a question or something that would need to be addressed, but anyway, I think, you know, I don't see no one because I don't see the lights on. <laughs> so maybe we just have to end it here and... They are very, very concentrated. Yeah, I see, see, I see. <laughs> I see. We can see that they don't just, okay, they don't wave at us. <laughs> okay, no. perfect, perfect. Let's not destroy them and they keep on doing what they have to do. Okay, perfect. So thanks a lot. Uh, Thank you, Paul. Thanks a lot, Anna. See you. Thanks. Okay. Thank you.